Another school abduction in Zamfara State. Gunmen take at least 18 people and kill no fewer than three. But we hear three of the abductees have escaped. President Muhammad Buhari signs a petroleum industry bill. The Senate applauds the action, but the Pan Niger Delta Forum criticizes its, its uh, provisions. And chaotic scenes from Afghanistan as citizens chase airplanes in a bid to leave the country. U.S. President Joe Biden insists military withdrawal was the right thing. And thank you for joining us on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. I am Annetta Felix. And I am Usaogi Ogbonwa. Yes, we do apologize for bringing the show a few minutes uh, behind schedule. But the great thing is that we're ready to unpack all the events that have occurred in the past few hours in Nigeria. Let's begin with the biggest story in the country right now. That's that the president has assented to the petroleum industry bill. Now, we know that this is a legislative document that has been stalling for about 20 years. Yeah. Eventually, it was good news to see that, you know, the House of Reps, the Senate had, you know, gone ahead to pass that, you know, July 16th and 17th, respectively. And the next question was, what was the president going to do? Was, was he going to assent this? Because we know that uh, there were other groups who had issues with this PIB. They felt that, first of all, the... Um, money for host communities the fund for them was too small they had gone back and forth between five percent three percent and ten percent they wanted host communities to get more funds they also had an issue with the money that was going to be um, given for oil exploration in the north and in the um, bay basin regions and they said that why would the government give 30 percent you know for the exploration of oil in the north so these were issues that they had and it was a question of if the president was going to make further adjustment to that or go ahead and give his assent. But yesterday, um, Femi Additional announced that the president has finally assented to the petroleum industry bill. But the thing now is they are protesting against this. The Financial Delta Forum, PANDEF, um, released a statement yesterday criticizing this, even though the Senate lauded the president for it, criticizing this, saying this is basically using southern money to fund the North. And it's just been a process that we haven't you know, yet seen the end of in the country. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was even, um, yeah, first of all, you know, I, I personally wasn't shocked that it was uh, assented to um, with the speed with which the Senate and the House of Reps, you know, had, um, you know, passed the bill. I expected mm -hmm. the president to um, sign it immediately. So, you know, I, I was only, you know, shocked because they said it was an isolation, um, you know, so when, the, you know, there was still news that he still signed, you know, documents, I was like, oh, okay, you know, they probably passed the, you know, papers to him while in isolation. Um, there is that. So, but I think the the challenge, you know, with all of this conversation is really with the interpretation of some of these things, and that's mostly with the thirty percent for frontier um, um, uh, states, uh, oil exploration in, in fr frontier states, and the three percent to host communities. Mm -hmm. um, we've, you know, many times spoken about how much the host communities deserve, you know, to be treated better, no doubt. Um, but it would never, you know, end the conversation with regards how these funds are truly used, you know, because there have been agencies that have been set up for these host communities and for Niger Delta communities for a long time that have not really been effective. And that also includes their state governments and how they've also been able to use uh, state funds effectively to ensure that these communities are treated better. NDDC has also been in the conversation for, you know, a while now and how much, you know, billions of naira have been allocated to the NDDC that don't seem to be doing, you know, any, you know, good for these communities or for, you know, Niger Delta community. So um, they would need to look deeper into that. I feel like that needs to be, you know, you know a bigger conversation um, to question how, you know, the state and local governments of these communities and the NDDC has been functioning a lot as well. There's also um, the um, interpretation of the 30% for frontier uh, states, um, which has been interpreted as... 30% for oil exploration in the north, you know, and like you also just mentioned, the way Pandev had described it, it is, you know, using money. Um, money from the south, yes. you know, to, uh, the, you know, to the north. 
Um, the three percent, of course, you know, there is there needs to be a proper ex you know explanation for that. I hope that we be able to have a longer conversation about that today. Um, the three percent, you know, if it is um, um, where it is really coming from, um, there is I think there is some clarity that needs to be put out with regards where the three percent for oil communities um, for host communities is, go is coming from, and also where the thirty percent that has been mentioned is coming from. And what exactly are these frontier states? Are they northern states or are they, you know, the river basins across Nigeria? I watched an interview yesterday where uh, someone from KPMG tried to explain that there's many river basins across Nigeria that Nigeria also needs to move away from just um, oil, oil exploration in the Niger Delta alone mm -hmm. to be able to explore oil in other parts of the country. There's the Owina River Basin, there's Oshun Basin, there's uh, uh, Niger Basin, I believe. There's many other places that... Um, possibly have um, oil reserves that we should be able to tap from to increase our production capacity in the country. Yes. So if you put that out, you know, that way, it then, you know, starts to make a little more sense. But if, if the narrative is that, oh, we're just moving money to the north for oil exploration, then, you know, it, it might seem a little fraudulent. Um, bear in mind that Lake Chad also, they, you remember that they discovered that there was, you know, some oil um, 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 in, uh, in, Lake, in the Lake Chad Basin. Mm -hmm. Um, that hadn't mentioned by the current administration, if it is um, oil that can be explored or can be, you know, um, um, brought out or not, uh, we still don't have clarity on that. So that's where the conversation is, you know, and sometimes, you know, you really need to look a little deep and see whether um, these complaints are, you know, just politics um, or selfish interests or they truly uh you have, know have, have a basis yeah exactly so so that that's what i would quickly just chip okay. in. okay so yes you know these documents can be lengthy you know involving lots of considerations and um one of them addresses where exactly your question you know you asked where would these monies be coming from the 10 percent that should the 10 percent which has now become three percent that should go to host communities as well as the 30 percent that would go for the explanation of oil now in section nine sub four of the pib it reads that the Frontier Exploration Fund shall be 10% of rents on petroleum prospecting licenses and 10% on petroleum mining licenses. The PIB section 9 also reads that the 10% um, of the NMPC's limited profit oil and profit gas as product sharing, profit sharing, and all of that. So it went on to say that the NMPC Limited will transfer the 30% of Frontier Oil and Profit Gas to the Frontier. Um, exploration fund escrow accounts and it just went on and on really explaining how where these funds will come from and how they will be distributed but the fact remains that um, the pan Niger Delta Forum and other stakeholders and leaders in the you know these areas where oil is um, basically say that these controversial sections of the bill should have been discussed should have been thrashed out before the president went on to assent it and yeah, well. a question I really want to ask is why do we have laws that do not really reflect the wishes of the people People. Whether it's the um, the law on the, the PIB, whether it's the um, VAT issue, whether it's the um, what's the other uh, camera, you know, yeah. I feel that, or not even what I feel. What it should be is that when you make laws, it should reflect you know, everything that the people want. You know, the, the wishes of the people should be considered. Stakeholders should be consulted before you go ahead and make a law. Because why do you make a law? that people would oppose. You know, people should be able to obey it because this is something we all agree to. That's why we are a democracy. We all have voices and, yeah. you know, and should be able to contribute to that process. But you know, you make laws, CAMA, PIB, whatever it is, people believe that some sections are controversial. We do not agree with it. And, and rather than trash it. that out, yeah. you go ahead and just pass it. And then that's why you have so much opposition to those laws. Well, I agree, to those I agree laws. with that. I Let's move that. on to our next story now. Um, we know about the um, sister at home order by the IPOB, the Indigenous People of Biafra, the prescribed group that has been described as a terrorist organization by the Nigerian government. They had, uh, you know, ordered a sit at home um, because their leader, Namdi Kanu, had been arrested allegedly in Kenya, you know. Um, you know, return to the country and all of that. The trial um, is set to hold later this this month. So the agitation really was for Enamdi Kanu to be released, and one of their aims to achieve that was ordering everybody in the southeast to sit at home every Monday. You know, till he's released, and they've tagged it Ghost Mondays. We saw how that almost affected exams. You know, necker exams in the country. But the issue here is, um, we saw a fire incident in Shell in Imo State, where at least six people have been confirmed dead. So trying to 
to make sense of this, residents of Imo State said this is definitely unconnected or not unconnected to the sit at home order. That the IPOB members were enraged that, you know, this staff of Shell Company had, you know, flagrantly refused to obey the sit at home order and that's when it went in there and set it ablaze. And really lots of questions regarding security. What really is the government doing regarding the sit at home order? What's the role of the Ohaneze Indigo? How exactly is the general mood of the people in you know the southeast and what really will be done about it? Because yeah. what we see is a proactive system where things happen and then the government go on to say that oh we'll do something about it or the police say well the trail of the suspects. But what could have been done to protect installations and facilities in those regions, you know, before things like this happen? Oh, uh, well, um, to that, um, uh, I just lost my thread of thought now. The, the, the IPOB, and uh, the last time we had this discussion, um, you know, I, I think I remember that I asked, you know, what do they hope to achieve with, you know, asking everyone to sit at home and how in, in God's earth do they expect that the you know, current administration would say, oh, you know, uh, people are, are sitting at home in the South East, so let's release Namdekano. It has zero effect you know, on his case, on his trial. You know, he will go to court. Um, he will, you know, go through the judicial, the whole, you know, criminal justice system. And if he's found guilty, then, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm not sure how in any way anybody thought that that would be effective. Well, but I think that is coming from the euphoria and the, 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 the sweetness that they feel in their system, you know, whenever they ask for a seat at home and people obey. So they're taking advantage of that fact that, you know, they have some it, it makes them feel good. I think, I think it makes them feel good. They, they feel very, very powerful mm. when they can, you know, order a seat at home. And this is coming from years ago when it started, maybe like 2017 or you know, 2018, when they started the seat at home order. I remember I was on radio then and I was asking, you know, everybody, you know, I had the same conversations and um, what's really the use of this sit at home, you know, and when you also ask people to not vote, what's the use? And I realized, you know, from some of those, you know, comments that it's really just the, the sweet feeling they get that they can give an order and people will obey because this has no effect on Namdekano's trial. It has zero effect on the federal government's, um, you know, uh, trying Namdekano. Um, so... They would continue to you know and do if these anything, things and it's enjoy. It's just to the detriment of the people of Absolutely. Because your students suffer Absolutely. when they can't sit for exams. So they will continue. Businesses suffer. So they will continue to enjoy that thing, and that's you know one one of the points that people would throw out when they say when you you give a person who has been claiming freedom fighter for so long, you finally give him power, he becomes the oppressor. You know that he has been complaining about, and that's really what they are showing. If they continue on this path, they will lose every single drop of goodwill that they supposedly had. Um, in the past from people of the Southeast and from Nigeria. Everyone who was somehow, somewhere apologetic um, or sympathetic to their, their cause will get to see them you know, or see beyond their cause and realize that these people are just, you know, criminals and mm. clowns masquerading as freedom fighters or, you know, secessionists or whatever they decide to call themselves. And once they lose that, they realize that they, they are on their own and people will rat them out. So, um, I don't know who's speaking to them or who's advising them. I don't, we also don't know 100% if they are really the ones responsible for this killings in Imo State or this incident in Imo State. But um, if they are, I, I, well, they, they, they need better advisors. Mm. And that's it on Top Trending. Now, I've taken a look at the papers this morning and quite some stories there. Let's share them with you on Off the Press after the break.